On Shabbat Hanukkah, we read two Torah portions, Miketz and Nesso. In Miketz, we have some background on Joseph about how he's progressing in the political realm of Egypt, and he's risen to a high level in Potiphar's household, Potiphar being one of the Pharaoh's ministers, and he's in charge of pretty much everything in the household at the state. But Potiphar's wife covets him, but Joseph resists this temptation. In retaliation for this, one day, the wife of Potiphar grabs a hold of him and demands that he satisfy her. When he breaks away, she tears his clothing and keeps a piece of it and claims that she has been raped by Joseph. So Potiphar puts Joseph into jail, where we now come to the real part of the story, which is Joseph interpreting dreams. Placed in the jail with him were the king's steward and the king's baker. They had dreams, and they related their dreams to Joseph. Joseph listened to these dreams and interpreted them as saying, in three days, you will have a benefit. Talking to the, to the steward and to the baker, he said, you will not benefit. You will do poorly. Well, the steward said to him, if I'm going to do well, I will not forget you. So they get released in three days. Um, as it turns out, the steward does well, and the baker does not do well. And the steward forgets all about Joseph. Two years into being into jail, finally the pharaoh starts to have some dreams. And he brings in everyone from across the Egyptian empire to try and interpret his dreams, but none of the soothsayers are able to do it. This is when the steward finally remembers about Joseph and his ability to interpret dreams. And they call Joseph in to interpret the pharaoh's dreams. And Joseph comes in and interprets them in a way that astounds everyone when he predicts for seven years of fat and seven years of famine and how the pharaoh must really prepare. But along the way, Joseph had to suffer a lot. Why, why do you think God made Joseph suffer so much along the way to reaching this position of trust with the pharaoh? Let me share with you the book called The Namesake, dealing with the story of survival and suffering of Indian family who many years ago immigrated to America and went through a lot of challenges and suffering until they somehow became part of American society. We really don't know why things happen, but we, we do know is that there is God, hidden God, all the way from the very beginning. Joseph is a good person. He tried to please his father. Mother died when he was very young. Now he's with his father and tried to show him that he cared for him. Father asked him to go and talk to his brothers. They put him in a pit, sold him to enemies, end up in the house of Potiphar. Try to be loyal to his master, end up in jail. Been in a jail, try to help everybody, put him another two years, forget about him. The end of that story, by being the viceroy king and everything turned to a happy ending, when we are in a tough time, economic tough time, situation of society that have a lot of challenges, we have to remember those stories of Joseph, the story of survival, the time of tremendous darkness. We have to feel that there is God with us, even the time that you see everything around is just block you from understanding what's going to happen and how things are going to happen. In this book, it's a good example. It's a family that came here and tried so hard to be part of the new life in America, and they have such a rough time and everything turned in a way that the relationship between the parents and the children and the society was so rough. Joseph, in a sense, represents us, represents people, represents a situation that you really do not understand God's inscrutable will, which turned to be fully understanding much later. So it's a story of suffering, but in a way, eventually you get the reason for that. Well, let me ask you about this. Now, he's falsely accused, and even Potiphar, pretty much seems to know that, that Joseph didn't do it. And yet there Joseph is in jail. He's been slandered. And slandering in Torah is, is not a good thing to do. If you look at the Psalms, they criticize slanderers in the Amida. There's prayers against slanderers that they should be destroyed immediately. Now Joseph is in jail. God knows he's innocent. Why did he let him suffer for two years? The, the rabbis tells us that in order to build a proper character in our language, when you have a soldier go to a special training, so you can say that the soldier is suffering, and the training is rough and tough and, and endless, but there's a reason for that, because eventually you create a very good pilot, a very good a trooper, a very good, well-trained person. In order for Joseph to handle a country, especially a country with such a crisis, he needs to go to a tremendous amount of training. And in our language, is a training of, you may call it suffering. 
Well, I guess to become a true soldier, you have to spend a little bit of time in jail, right? Isn't that what Moshe Dayan said about It's not a question of jail. It's not just the jail, Larry. <laughs> it's not just the jail. It's an issue of, of real, what is the big picture. If you read the story of Job, Eob, it's a story of a man who really did not understand why things happen. And until he saw these things in a broader understanding, he would really have a different perception of things and why things happen in a certain way. And it's very much connected to Hanukkah. Parsha Nassau relates to Hanukkah. And it's always read this week with the previous portion. So there must be some in relationship between the two for that to be happening. Do you want to explain that further, Rabbi? Yeah, yeah, it's a um, story of survival. It's the story of the few against the many. It's a story in many ways connected to Joseph, the Hashmonaim, which you call the Maccabees, and our lives. Darkness. How you fight darkness? Rav Cook said you can't take a gun, can't take a knife, fight darkness. What do you do? You light candle. Lighting candle, even a small candle, makes a difference. Candle is representative of people's heart. The real fight was a fight over spirituality versus materialistic world. So it's very much connected to the story of Joseph, the story of Hanukkah and our lives. What we are really in a big fight. There's so much darkness. We are fighting outside and inside over one core issue, the future. What is the future of the country? What is the future of our people? Lighting candles makes a difference. There are some situations that the darkness is so great, there's nothing else to do. Why do you think the, the Greek Syrian army needed to desecrate the temple so much? What was their purpose in that? Uh, it's not just the Syrian story. And it's not just the history of our people, it's the message behind that. So let's put aside the narrative and understand the concept. The concept is we need to light candles to this very moment because we are connected to the story of our people, the survival of our people, the survival of Jacob, the survival of Joseph, the survival of the Hashmonaim, the Maccabees, the survival of the few. Why they did it? They have their own agenda. They want basically to have our people part of their life, part of their culture. They, unlike the story of Haman, they not intend to kill us physically. Their intent was to take away our values, our spiritual life, our authenticity, our way of thinking. They want us to be part of the Syrian Greek way of thinking and culture. And that was the real war. It was a spiritual war. That was their goal, but they certainly didn't accomplish it, did they? If you look carefully, you see that the Mark Twain with his statement, how and what's the, the secret of the Jewish survival, is the best response. If you see our people lighting candles everywhere, and that's bring the future of our people, that's the secret of our survival. In this episode of Torah Talk, we'll visit the Hanukkah celebration of the Alper family Aleph Bet Jewish Day School in Annapolis. This is our first year in our new building, and today we have a program for Hanukkah as part of our celebration of the holiday, um, part of our series of celebrations of Jewish holidays throughout the year. We're thrilled to be able to have our kids um, learn about their heritage and be able to live it. 